What's up guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make Zupa Toscana soup. But before I do that, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll be dropping recipes each and every week. Now on to the fun part, or not so fun part. We're gonna go ahead and peel up about four potatoes, give or take, depending on the size. Once they're peeled, go ahead and chop the ends off and then we're gonna slice these bad boys into about a quarter inch thick slices. Once you're done slicing your potatoes, we're going to go ahead and quarter them yet again. Basically what we're going for here is bite-sized pieces of potato that will cook at the same rate in our soup. Once they're all chopped up, we're going to go ahead and rinse them under some cold water. Make sure we get any dirt or particulates off of the potato. Yes, that's the first time I've ever said the word particulates. Next, we're going to go ahead and dice up a onion. It does not matter how finely you dice it because the onion is going to cook down quite a bit in the soup. So just give it a rough chop. Moving on to our bacon. So go ahead and get your Dutch oven nice and warm. Add in about four strips of bacon as you see me doing here. We're going to cook this over medium heat so that the bacon has time to render all of its delicious fat, which is going to be the foundation for flavor throughout the rest of this dish. Quick little bacon money shot for you guys. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in our Italian sausage. I'm using mild here. You can use hot if you like. I also use red pepper flakes later in the dish to add a little bit more spice. But feel free to adjust the spiciness based on how much of a savage you are. Next, I'm seasoning with salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, along with a little bit of Italian seasoning. Cook the sausage until it's no longer pink. And always make sure to scrape up the fond at the bottom of the skillet. This step is super critical because it adds a ton of flavor to the rest of your dish. Once the meat is cooked through, go ahead and remove it with a slotted spoon so that we can reserve some of that oil to cook our onion. We're gonna add the onion to the pot and cook it until it becomes translucent. Probably takes about two to three minutes or so. Once the onion begins to cook down and become tender, we're gonna go ahead and add in one to two tablespoons of our better than bouillon garlic base. This stuff is super concentrated in flavor and absolutely delicious. They sell it at most grocery stores or you can get it on Amazon. Highly recommend all of their products. No, they're not a sponsor. Not yet, at least. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in our chicken stock. We're using about six cups of chicken stock here. Next, add in your potatoes, and then we're going to bring these up to a boil and then reduce them to a simmer and cover and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the potatoes become nice and fork tender. Now it's time for the fork test. If the fork pierces through potatoes easily, as you see there, then the potatoes are done. Now go ahead and add in your kale. Yes, I'm slipping in some kale on you guys. Trust me, it's delicious. If you absolutely refuse to eat kale, you can substitute for spinach, but come on guys. Now that we've got your green veggies out of the way, it's time to go ahead and add in that sausage and the rest of the bacon. Once the meat has been added, go ahead and incorporate all the ingredients. Let them get to know each other a little bit. And then we're going in with some heavy cream. Mix in the heavy cream allow all of the flavors to come together. And then we're going to cover this and simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Allow the kale to get nice and tender. Stir occasionally, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. This soup is super flavorful. We're adding different layers of flavor throughout. That's why we never rinse out the pan. As always, taste as you go and make sure you adjust the seasoning to your preference. I added a little bit more Italian seasoning, some red chili pepper, and some salt. You can make this as spicy as you like by adding those chili flakes. And once the kale is tender, the potatoes are tender, and the seasoning is spot on, you're good to go. You have some Zupa Toscana soup, a hell of a lot better than what you get at Olive Garden. Now time to plate the soup up. Go ahead and ladle in your soup into your bowl. And then this is the part where the Olive Garden waitress comes over and asks if you would like some fresh Parmesan. You say, of course. 
and then she asks you to let her know when to stop and then you just stare at her until her arm gets tired. Go ahead and add your Parmesan and then add a little bit of those red pepper flakes and you have yourself a delicious Zuppa Toscana soup. There you have it folks. I hope you enjoy the recipe. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for your support.